Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this service on the second Sunday of Lent. This is Church of the Resurrection in Hamilton, Ontario. My name is Allison Khoury, and I'll be leading the service this morning. Our opening hymn is Tree of Life and Awesome Mystery. Tree of life and awesome mystery, in your death we are reborn. Though you die in all of history, still you rise with every morn. Still you rise with every by your spirit that he might emerge to fulfill his mission lead us by your spirit Nicodemus was challenged to be born again by your spirit fill us with your spirit the Samaritan woman was offered living water when she came to the well where Jesus sat satisfy our thirst through your spirit the man born blind was freed from guilt and despair in the touch of Jesus. Heal us through your spirit. Lazarus died but found new life in the power of Jesus' words. Raise us by your spirit. God of wilderness and water, your son was baptized and tempted as we are. Guide us through this season that we may not avoid struggle but open ourselves to blessing through the cleansing depths of repentance and the heaven-rending words of the Spirit. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Genesis. A reading from the book of Genesis. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. I will confirm my covenant between me and you and will, will greatly increase your numbers. Abram fell face down and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. No longer will you be called Abram. Your name will be Abraham. For I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you very fruitful. I will make nations of you, and kings will come from you. I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you for the generations to come, to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. God also said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you are no longer to call her Sarai. Her name will be Sarah. I will bless her and will surely give you a son by her. I will bless her so that she will be the mother of nations. Kings of peoples will come from her. Holy Word, Holy Wisdom.
The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning, and looking at the disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, if any want to be my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will find it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and lose their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the Gospel of Christ. truth be spoken here and only truth received. Amen. Chances are you've probably heard Jesus' words from Mark today before, and possibly many times. I'm going to read verses uh, 34 to 35 again. If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and the sake of the gospel will save it. I don't know what those words, bear your cross, mean for you, but they make people think of all kinds of things. My own ancestors were Ply Plymouth Brethren homesteaders who thought of God as a taskmaster who wanted them to suffer. For many of them, God was like a disciplinary teacher or parent with a strap. And these words have very, been, very often been used to prove that point. And that understanding of Jesus is not limited to hundreds of years ago. In fact, just, I don't know, maybe last year, I was talking to a priest friend of mine who was going through a difficult time. And I was surprised when he explained his situation to me by saying, well... I know that God asks us to carry our cross, and I guess this is just my cross that God has given me. Now, I don't know about you, but personally, I have enough of my own guilt and fear without God having to heap extra on top of me. So it's no wonder that people today have grown tired of worshiping a God like this, a God who just makes our lives difficult for no apparent reason. Now, on the other hand, 
our culture encourages us to look for a God who will get rid of any kind of discomfort in our lives. Just look at, I, I remember that I noticed particularly when I was going to school in Toronto, there's just so many ads and the, the message of the ads was generally the same. You deserve better. You're the best. This product is important because you need it because you're the most important thing in your life. But this obsession with wealth and power is, not, is also not limited to capitalistic individualism. Here in Mark 8, Jesus' disciples are also really hoping that his fame is going to take them to the top when he overthrows the Roman Empire. Just before our reading today, Jesus has admitted to the disciples that he is the Messiah. So they're assuming that being buddies with someone who holds that kind of title is going to have a major payout for them. But Jesus, throughout the book of Mark, tells them not to tell anyone who he is. Because he knows that they are going to miss the point if they focus on that title. Jesus instead came to exemplify a completely different way of being human in the world. To follow the Messiah is not to gain wealth and power and privilege, but it is actually to reject those things as priorities in our lives. In fact, Jesus' way is so different that it undermines the entire system on which the empire is built. As Jesus is trying to get across to them, it is actually going to get him killed in the end. Following Jesus is not easy, not because God wants to heap pain and suffering upon us arbitrarily, but because it requires us to live our lives so differently that we will become a threat to the empire establishment. I think that what Jesus is trying to help his, under, his disciples understand here is that he is actually more concerned with the action of their lives than the belief. That is, the things they do more than the things they say. God showed up as a human to show us how to best be human. It makes me think of a unique piece of pottery that now I don't know if you've ever been to a pottery show with unique pottery pieces sometimes it's difficult to tell what exactly the potter had in mind when they created that piece uh, I think of um, an egg separator which is a little jug with a random slit halfway in the middle and it it's it looks very odd because if you put milk in there and tried to pour it it would all pour out the hole and it'd be very odd but it works very very well for separating eggs. We are like those unique pieces of pottery which God has created and God created us for this particular purpose. And you, you could try to use that piece of pottery for something different, but you are not living your best life. You are not living the way the potter best imagined and intended until you understand what it is you were most created for. When our lives are oriented in a way for which they were not intended, we just aren't going to be our best selves. And so Jesus comes to show us the, the way, the purpose for which the Creator intended us. Jesus teaches that the reign of God is breaking into our world right now. And it doesn't look like power or knowledge or wealth. If you want to be part of it, your life is going to turn upside down. In fact, it might look a little bit like this. Being pulled in two different directions. The pri priorities of the empire are things like money, comfort, autonomy, power, and privilege. But on the other hand, the priorities of Jesus are feeding and housing the poor taking care of the earth, gentleness, humility, and compassion. When your life is reoriented in the direction of Jesus, it is going to make people uncomfortable. It is going to make, it is not going to make sense to the empire, and it will probably be seen as a threat. 
So in Jesus' time, the result of this was obvious. The reorientation of people's lives was threatening because it meant that women and slaves were no longer considered disposable property. It meant that subservience to Caesar was not a Christian's top priority. Now, we, are, we live in a world where people are accustomed to living with a certain different set of values and it's not a big deal. But in this economy, if these ideas spread widely enough, it would cause serious damage to the economy and threaten the entire system upon which the ruling elite relied for their own wealth and power, which is why it leads to death in Jesus' case. Now today, having your life reoriented in the way of Jesus is unlikely to get you killed, at least here in Hamilton. But it will upend your priorities to such an extent that people around you will feel uncomfortable. For example, I know of people who give their wealth away before they die. Some choose to live in a poor inner city neighborhood to connect more personally with people who are hurting the most. I know others who get rid of their car or use solar power or buy only used clothing or work part-time to make space for volunteering. And I don't give you these examples as a list of shoulds or to make you feel guilty. Because there are many different ways that you might find to reorient your priorities in the way of Jesus. The point is that following Jesus is not just an idea and it's not a club to be part of. Following Jesus requires a total paradigm shift, which is likely to take your life in a whole new direction. But this is not the sort of shift which is going to make your life arbitrarily more difficult. If the potter created you to be an egg jug, and you've, or sorry, an egg separator, and you've been trying to be a milk jug, you will actually do much better once you realize how to function as the egg separator. It's almost like discovering who you are meant to be when we reorient our priorities in the way of Jesus. It's more like the story of my friend Christina, who for many years she was working a job that she hated, and finally she made the difficult decision to, to quit her job and go to culinary school. That was hard on her family financially, and I think it was really tough for her to be, feel like she was mid-career and had to start all over again. But in the end, she, and she found a job that she loved, and that in turn made her a more joyful, more fulfilled version of herself. It was like the initial difficult pivot in order to do something more freeing with the rest of her life. Jesus' message about shifting our priorities is difficult for us to grasp, and it was not something that the disciples were able to understand either. Like all of Jesus' followers after them, it took the disciples their entire lives in order to reorient themselves. In fact, poor Peter, he's so confused about Jesus' message that Jesus calls him an adversary or a Satan. Now, I'm pretty sure that this is one of those places in the Bible that if you were reading it in the ancient Greek, you would laugh out loud because it, the whole situation is just kind of comical. It sounds to us like Jesus is being mean to Peter. Maybe he is a little bit, but he's trying to make his point clear. If you think that following me is about power and privilege, you have totally missed the point. If you are with me, you will place so much on importance on radical love and forgiveness, that you will follow me all the way to the cross. But here we are, Lent 2, and we know that in the coming weeks, Peter, Peter will be unable to really understand this until Jesus is finally killed. He is not going to follow Jesus all the way to the cross, and neither are those other kind of core disciples. Only a few women will go all the way there with him. But Jesus doesn't give up on them. He continues to show them again and again, even after his resurrection, how to shape their lives differently. 
And if Jesus had that sort of patience teaching Peter, we can trust that he will also have gentleness with us. All that Jesus asks of the disciples and also of us is that we keep showing up and keep asking to follow and keep asking to be reoriented in the way of Jesus. Peter had crazy ideas and he was a major pain some days, but that is exactly what he did. If we keep asking Jesus to help us let go of the values of the empire and reorient our lives in the way of life, he will walk with us just as he also continued to walk with Peter. I invite you to join me now as we affirm the words of our faith together and we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the woman Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. Third day, he was throws. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue in worship with prayers of the people. Relying on the promises of God, let us pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. Gracious God, your gift of grace is for all people. Give confident faith to all the baptized that they may follow you wholeheartedly. Give new believers joy in your promises. Give hope and courage to those who suffer for their faith. God of love, etc. Promise in God all the ends of the earth worship you. From galaxies to microorganisms, preserve your creation. Teach humanity to wonder at your work and to join you in tending to creation well being. God of love, care. giver of life, you rule over the nations. Raise up advocates for peace and justice within and between nations. Give life where hope seems dead and call into existence new realities we cannot even imagine. God of love. Merciful God, in Jesus, you join humanity in suffering and death. Reveal to all the depths of your love shown on the cross. Accompany all who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. Restore all who are sick or grieving. Bring vindication for victims of injustice, exploitation, and oppression. Today in our parish, we pray for Marilyn H., Frank, Fred and Verna, John and Sylvia, for 
Norma, Dolores, Hazel, Molly, Pat, John P, Gloria, Charlotte, Elsie, Pam, Faye, Joan, David, Janet, Diane R, Mabel, Wayne, Gary, Norma F, Reverend Stephen, Harry. We also pray for Merle Jordan, sister of Dunstan Jordan. Let us also pray for all frontline and essential workers and for all who are suffering from COVID-19 and for those at high risk for this virus, especially those in nursing homes, hospital, homeless shelters, and prison. We pray for the leaders of the country and they continue, as they continue to make difficult decisions, we pray for teachers and students. In our church, we pray for Marilyn Llewellyn, Ray Luther, Valerie Luther, and families. In the Diocese of Niagara, we pray for Bishop Susan Bell, we also pray for the Reverend David Pontin and the people of St. Paul's and Glancy. God of Abraham and Sarah, you embrace your people in covenant and promise them your blessing. Strengthen us in faith so that with those who journey with you in every age, we may proclaim your deliverance to generations yet unborn. We await the day of Christ's coming in glory. Lead us by the example of all the saints when you have called to take up their cross and follow you. That together we may find our lives in you. God of love. Amen. Coming before you, our God, we confess our faults and our failing. We confess lives cluttered by frivolous concern and hope abandoned for easy comfort. Coming before you, the Prince of Peace, we confess our conflicts, our rash words, our thoughtless actions. We confess lives marred by selfish living and guarded loving. Coming before you, the God among us, in friend and in stranger, we confess our apathy toward our neighbor, both seen and unseen. We confess lives confined by the limits of our generosity, and a gospel limited by our lack of imagination. Coming before you, eternal word made flesh, creator of the universe, an example of resurrected life, we receive forgiveness and the grace to become the living examples of your new creation. In the name of God, creator, redeemer, and life giver. Amen. Now the peace of Christ be always with you. Our offertory hymn is Beyond the Days.
we will lift this bread, lifting our lives in offering to God. We will pour this wine, pouring out worship and praise to our Creator. This bread will be broken, Christ given to us, so that the broken may be made whole and many members become one body. This cup will be shared, Christ given to us, so that sins may be forgiven and all may participate in the new life of the kingdom of God. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In Christ your Son, our life and yours are brought together in a wonderful exchange. He made his home among us that we might forever dwell in you. As children of your redeeming purpose, we offer you our praise with angels and archangels, the whole company of heaven, praying the hymn of your unending glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We thank you, Lord our God, for this world which you have given us. You never cease to make it new, and you call us to work with you. You accept the work of our hands. You have made humankind in your image. Each one of us is fashioned in your likeness, and we are able to recognize your face in the faces of our siblings. Kyrie eleison. You have never desired to live apart from us, and you have taught us to know you through the law and the prophets, the apostles and the evangelists, who told us the marvelous story of your love. And you have come to us in your Son, Jesus Christ. In him you have walked along our roads, looked at us with human eyes, done the kind of things that we do, and shared with us the joy which can never be lost. Kyrie eleison. On the night he was betrayed, your son, Jesus Christ, took bread, blessed, broke, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Likewise, Jesus also took the cup, offered you thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. Now you give us his body and blood, and we give ourselves to you. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts, that all who eat and drink at this table and who share in this spiritual communion may be body, one body, and one holy people, a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Holy Spirit, come to us. Holy Spirit, come to us. And now we pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Made one in Christ, and one with one another, we offer these gifts, and with them ourselves, a single living act of praise. Our communion hymn is Jesus Meek and Humble.
All your works praise you, O God, and your faithful servants bless you. Gracious God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. May we who share his body live his risen life. We who drink this cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give the light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us so that we and all your children may be free and the whole earth live to praise your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May we find the road that leads to life. May we take the turns that bring right relationships. May we pause to accompany others on the way. And may we journey with God through Lent and long for the horizon and dawn. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Our closing hymn is Lift Every Voice and Sing.
Just a couple of announcements before we go this morning. The most important of which is that when I showed up this morning, I saw daffodils poking through in the church garden. So guess what, folks? We're almost there. Very exciting. Um, also, of course, Lenten groups continuing. The Lectio Divina group on Saturday morning at 11. The book group starting this morning about quarter after 11. Of course, coffee hour first. And if you don't have the Zoom link for that, you can get it in the e-blast or message the church or call the church also. Um, and just a reminder, you can actually access these things by phone. So if you don't have internet or you're not doing Zoom, but you would like to call in, we can give you that information to call in to the book group or Lectio Divina or Coffee Hour. But please let us know. Um, just a couple things coming up this week uh, in the wider church. The World Day of Prayer is on Friday. That's March 5th. And um, uh, the e-blast will have more information this week, how you can participate in that. It, there's a focus on the church in Vanuatu this year. And uh, also there's, a, I believe, a, a cable station which is running the service. So that information will all be in the e-blast. And also PWRDF has put out uh, some unique Lent resources, both for the general church and also something specifically for kids. So that information is also going to be in the e-blast. And now, as you head out into March, go in peace to follow in the footsteps of Christ. Thanks.